What's going on? What's going on, YouTube? What's going on, Dallas? It's Boot Camp 101. This is your boy, Steve Belcher with Urban Health Outreach Media. Thank you for joining me today. Look, today we're going to talk about the hemodialysis machine. Bear with me one second because I'm going to upload uh, the picture and we're going to go by that. So how's everyone doing today? Hope everyone's doing fine. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with you. And uh, just taking it one day at a time. So we're on YouTube. Thank you for anyone who's watching on YouTube. If you're in the Dallas's Boot Camp 101, thank you for joining in. So look. We're going to talk about the dialysis machine, better known as the hemodialysis machine and how it works. So one of the jobs of your kidneys is to filter waste out of your blood. That's one of the jobs of the kidneys. But when they stop working, the dialysis machine is your lifesaver. They take over that job. So let's like let's take a look at how it works. So if you look up here on the screen, number one, as we come down, number one is the screen. That's where you can see how much fluid is being taken off, uh, how many hours. Uh, you're on dialysis, uh, and a lot of other great information. Your dialysate flow rate, um, temperature of the machine. You can also get in the machine to calculate fluid removal, set different alarms, set your bicarb. Uh, this is like, like I said, the main screen where you can pretty much see everything on the home screen. Now, as we move down, I'm sorry, um, I can't see that number, but if you can see my um, curse at the top, that's where I'm starting from. I'm not sure exactly what that number is here at the top. But this is pointing to the screen. But if you go to one, that's the blood coming from the patient, this line. And then you got number two, the blood pump. That's what uh, pulls the blood. The pump keeps the blood flowing uh, from the body to the dialyzer and back. That's what the pump do, number two. Number three is the arterial pressure monitor alarm. And that monitors the arterial pressure from your needle. Number four, blood pump speed. That's, again, that's the pump that keeps the blood flowing from the body to the dialyzer 
and back, that's where you can see the uh, speed, whether it's 300, 350, uh, 400. Then uh, number five is pressure of blood flow. You can monitor the uh, pressure of the blood flow right there. There's You can see there's other um, look like pressure as the same. That's where you can monitor the uh, arterial pressure, uh, venous pressure. You can see it right on that screen where number five says the pressure of blood flow. Now, normally it's a sailing bag. You see it at the top right of the screen, bag of sailing to wash blood back to the end, uh, uh, at the end of treatment. Also, that bag is used to give you saline administer if you're cramping or if you experience hypotension or low blood pressure. And if you come down there, six, where it says uh, blood then flows to the kidney, which is the artificial kidney, which I will show you. Uh, where unwanted components are removed by diffusion. Excess fluid is removed by pressure. That's where the magic happens, inside that kidney. Uh, when you move down to number seven, where it says blood is diffused against the dialysate fluid, which is made up, at, uh, made up of an acid and bicarbonate, uh, mixed to the correct strength with treated water. They go through that hose. And if you see that container at the bottom, this is the acid right here. If you can see um, my cursor, but the acid is at the very bottom that sits on the bottom of the machine where that red tube extends out. That's the source of the acid. And then uh, right above it, where you see this blue with this bag with the blue ring, that's the bicarbonate. Okay, now number eight, it says the blood then leaves the kidney uh, treated and returns to the patient. Well, that's the um, venous monitoring, I'm sorry, the venous air detector which detects air, if any air is going back to the patient uh, from the dialyzer. So you got the dialyzer that acts as an artificial kidney. You got the used dialysate that goes down the drain, okay? And you got fresh dialysate that's cleaning, which is cleaning fluid, enters the dialysate through those lines at number seven. Uh, Sometimes, there's a syringe connected, uh, which is a heparin pump. Uh, blood can clot when it's moving through the tubing. A medication called heparin can keep blood from clotting. If you receive heparin, uh, the heparin pump will release just the right amount of heparin into the blood. Now, the heparin pump, let me show you. I'm going to let me remove this. This would, this would be the heparin pump right here. That's the heparin pump. That's the heparin pump right there. Um, again, at the bottom, this is where the plastic jugs are. Right here, you have the acid right here. And then you got the buy you got the buy card right here. And some of y'all machines may look like this, right? That uh, that was the blood pump right there. That go the venous. That go the uh, dialyzer, and then that go the tube, the dialysate hoses. The saline bag goes up there. Right, arterial, 
right there. Heparin pump right there. And then that go the screen right there where you see all your numbers. So the dialysis machine also monitors your treatment. That's why you got to know. How would you know if your arterial or your venous or your access is working if you're not keeping track of your numbers, of the pressure of the venous and the arterial? You got some warriors, this, their machine goes off like all through a treatment. How, listen, I kid you not. How many warriors, if you're watching, right? Wait a minute. That got the green because I got the green screen. That's why I look like the invisible man. It's going to happen with the blue too. But how many warriors, right? You get stuck with the needle, right? And they dig in like your arterial. When they first put the needle in, they're putting the needle in and they have issues. They digging around, they dig in and they say, all right, I finally, I think I got it. Right, and you got a slow, like right here. It's not pulsing out like it usually do. It's a sluggish flow, right? And they turn on the machine, and 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 it works, but it starts alarming, right? They come and push the button, and the alarm goes off again. Then they come back, and they, uh. How you say it? they got to adjust the needle? How, how many warriors know about that? They got to adjust the needle. They digging in your arm, and and you, damn, you like man, what's going on? You got the needle in or what? What's going on? And they still digging, and then they put the tape back on, cut the machine on, and say, I got to turn your pump speed down. The alarm's still going off, right? And then if they turn your pump down, you're not getting a good dialysis because your access is not working. They may have gave up. They may be tired of fooling with it because they got three other people to deal with. So that's why you got to know what's your normal pressures if the needle is working. So you don't get no bull crap. You need to know what they know. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because if you know what they know, then they can't pull a wool over your face. Because you know. So the Dallas machine monitors your treatment. It monitors how much fluid is pulled off. Uh, and it monitors a lot of other stuff. The temperature of the machine bicarbonate level uh and, and did you know that blood never actually goes into the dialysis machine some of the roles of the dialysis machine include circulating your blood through the dialyzer now i don't know how many warriors this is a, a artificial kidney right but i have it cut in half how many of you ever seen the inside of this? How many, how many of your units, your dialysis units, gave you an education and showed you exactly what your blood goes through? That's what your blood flows through. Did you know that? Did you know that each time your blood hits the dialyzer, this is what it's going through. Those are the fibers inside the filter. Those are the fibers. How many of your units or clinics educated you on that? The dialysis machine also keeps track of blood flow and blood pressure. Also measuring how much extra fluid is removed from your body. It also 
uh, mixes fresh dialysate used to clean your blood. That's what that's what this machine does right here. Everything I just read circulates your blood through the dialyzer. It keeps track of blood flow and blood pressure. It measures how much fluid is removed from your body. And it mixes dialysate used to clean the blood. How many clinics are going to tell you or told you how this machine works so you can have an understanding of your treatment? That's what we do here at Urban Kidney Alliance. Now we're going to talk about this filter. This is how it looks, not cut in half. And guess who makes it? The same company that makes the machine. They sell a machine to DeVita. You see how, how, how it's a, a money thing? Fresenius Medical Care makes this. So, but at one time, I kid you not, at one time, this company used to reuse these dialyzers. Now, if you make the dialyzers, why would you put formaldehyde in it and reuse them when it says, where does it say that? Single use only. You see that? You see that? Single use only. You know why they have that there? Because at one time, they used to reuse the filters. People are still doing it. Companies are still reusing it. You see it for yourself. Single use that means throw it away after you finish with it. Don't take it back and put formaldehyde or some other germicide in the filter for the next treatment. Now, let's talk about it. This is it. Same filter, but it's cut in half to show you this. This is the inside. So... Here we go. Only, okay, the dialyzer filters waste from your blood. Only about two cups of blood leave your body at a time. Again, about two cups. That's only about 9% of your blood. There are two sections inside the dialyzer. One section contains blood and the other contains the cleaning solution, dialysate. These two sections are separated by a filter called a membrane. This membrane has microscopic holes that water and waste can fit through, but blood cells cannot. The dialysate pours waste through the filter and out of the blood. The dialysate with the waste is flushed down the drain and the clean blood is returned to you. Extra fluid in the blood is removed in a similar way. Now, you see that, right? That's what your blood goes through. You see that picture? It's the same thing. You got your blood that goes through, the dialysate that comes up, this part that comes out through here. And that's how it works. The blood is that goes through the filters. The dialysis machine keeps you safe. But that depends on the operator. That depends on the operator who's working that machine, okay? The machine is supposed to keep you safe. But depending on who's running that machine determines if you have a safe treatment because what if they don't know how to operate it? If air gets into the blood tubing, you hear that word, if. 
if that means it can happen if blood if air gets into the blood tubing it could be harmful to you luckily the machine has two air traps one is before the dialyzer and one is after if an air bubble somehow gets through the traps an air sensor will shut down the pump and an alarm will sound blood flow is stopped until the air is removed now let me show you the air traps that they're speaking of in the arterial line it would be here but this one doesn't have an air filter in it but this is the arterial right And this one is the venous. Now, this is the filter that they're talking about. That filter right there. That's supposed to trap some of the air. But let me tell you something. If air get in here and this drops, this level drops down, it can go below there and that air can travel to the patient and, and get right into the patient. So you got to be careful and make sure that this chamber, this venous chamber is filled right here, three quarters. Right there. You can even see the line on it. You see that line? That's why it's there because the blood it's supposed to stop right there. So it can give room to come down. You see that in there? The blood comes down, give it some uh, room to flow. And it's supposed to be right there, not down here. That level is not supposed to be down here because that's almost close to getting air into the system. It's supposed to be up here. A lot of guys that you take your parents to treatment you need to know this too. <laughs> your, your mom or dad sitting there, they don't know the chamber could be this low. They could have a new person working on them and, then, and they don't raise the chamber. This happens all the time. Because I mean, if you don't know every day, there's not a perfect day in dialysis, right? When you got 25 to 30 patients three shifts every treatment don't go smooth there's something happens with one of those treatments one of those 30 treatments throughout the day something's going i don't want it to that's why i walk around the unit when i was working my eyes was like this i'm i'm like radar on mash you know i'm i'm, I'm making sure the blood pumps are where they're supposed to be. I'm checking orders. Um, I'm just making sure everything, my awareness. And I thank God for the military, for being a scout, to, to uh, raise my awareness, my, my keenness. Because I'm going to tell you, you have to be like that when you work with people, especially as a nurse working in different units and not knowing the people I work with. I don't know them from a can of paint. I don't know what their technique is. Uh, are they good? Are they a slouch? What? So I got to go in, putting everybody uh, on the same level, uh, looking at no one knows what they're doing until they prove me wrong. Yes, that's how I got to carry it. Because I don't know. So... With that being said, we got about five minutes. I don't have any comments. Got about one person now in my watch party. Uh, one person just, just joined me on YouTube or maybe Dallas's boot camp. I'm not sure. But let me tell you something. If you don't, 
if you go to dialysis, your mom, your dad, and you're not familiar with this machine, or you go to dialysis and you just go in there and sit down and don't look at what they're doing. I mean, you're like uh, like sheep being led to uh, slaughter. And reason why I say that, because you got to know like how much fluid is being taken off if they set the machine right. Again, we're talking about other human beings and to air is human. So people do make mistakes. They don't want to make mistakes, but they just do. So somebody could be rushing and they could uh, they could be thinking that they put in two thousand uh 2,000 units or 2,000 cc's or liters to take off and put in 200 and you don't take all your fluid off and then you'll take all your fluid off right and you come back and you tell them and then the technician say oh I don't know what happened because I set you for your fluid and then you go back and look they only set the machine for 200 but y'all don't know that because they don't tell you. You think the technician wanted to tell you that they forgot to set your machine to remove two liters and they only took off 200? This happens. That's why you got to know what's going on with your dialysis treatment. Know what your blood flow rate is. Know what your dialysis flow rate is. Know how much heparin you get. Know what your treatment time is. Know what your sodium level is. Know what your dialysate bath is. Do you run on a 2K, which is 2 potassium bath? Do you run on a 1 potassium bath? Do you, want, do you run on a 0K potassium bath? What is the calcium ratio? Is it 2.0 calcium? Is it 2.5? These are the things that you should know, even for your family member. Because if they can't comprehend or they at a point where they don't know, then you got to be the advocate. This is not rocket scientist. So again, know how, know Everything that's going on with this machine, the best you can. Also, I encourage you to know how much EPO you take. How much EPO do you receive? How much EPO do your mom or dad receive? I had one gentleman tell me, I don't know. And I told that gentleman, go and ask the charge nurse, or the dietitian, how much EPO your dad gets and report back to Dallas's boot camp 101 and give me a report of how much your dad receives. You need to know that. You need to know how much medicine they're giving, giving him and if they're giving him that. And if the medicine is working or not, you need to know if they on calcium medicine, if they on iron medicine, if they on an antibiotic. Do you know your family members allergies? Do they have any medication allergies? Do you have any medication allergies if you're on dialysis? Do you know what size needles are placed in your arm? Do you know if they are 15 gauge or is it a 14 gauge? Is it a 17 gauge? 16 gauge. What size needle do you use? If you have a catheter, how much heparin are they putting in that catheter at the end of treatment? How much iron do you get?
it's a lot. It's a lot. We know it. We know it's a lot. And that's why we're here. We are clinicians and advocates that want to advocate and educate the global population that's impacted by chronic kidney disease. That's all we want to do. And again, we need your help. We're not asking for money. That's not the help I'm talking about. That's not the help I'm talking about. So don't have to worry about going in your pockets. The help I'm talking about is sharing the broadcast, participating in the discussions, create dialogue, share in the groups that you can. Let's make some noise. I seen people wear t-shirts, get loud for kidney disease. Well, I ask you, how loud are you getting? How loud are you getting for kidney disease? This is how we get loud. This is how I get loud. Posting multiple education pictures. Giving you the information. Yes. Can it be overwhelming? Absolutely. But what's your life worth? What is your life worth when you're dealing with the ninth leading cause of death? What is your life worth? Wouldn't you want to know everything that's going on that affects your body, your peace of mind, your quality of life? Wouldn't you want to know that? Or you don't want to know? Or you just want to go uneducated, unaware, and you're sitting in dialysis, and all of a sudden, one day, and it will happen. It will happen. One day, someone who just came out of the training class, yes, someone who just came out of training will come to you, will come to you with this needle. Shaken, shaken to stick your access. One to two months experience about to stick you with this. You're their first patient and they infiltrate you. They infiltrate you. And what I mean by infiltrate you, stick this needle clean through your access. Your access swelling up, tightening up, almost look like Popeye. That's why you need to know what's going on. So that doesn't happen to you. So it doesn't happen to you. So again, how you can help? No money. We already know. We know uh, our supporters that have donated, and we thank them. God bless our supporters who have donated what they could. And those donations go to helping us able to do these broadcasts so you can get educated. How much is your life worth? 
especially when you're dealing with the ninth leading cause of death in the United States. You may be at risk for corona, but I don't believe it's the one of the top 10 leading causes of death in the United States. So how can you help? Share the Lisa Baxter show. Share World Kidney News. Share Warriors Quest. Share Urban Renal Talk with Tamika and Steve. Share Kidney Stories too with Uncle Jim. Share this broadcast, Kidney Disease Education Moment. Go to our YouTube. Share that. Bring people to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our Facebook, Urban Health Outreach Media, Urban Kidney Alliance. Like those pages, Warriors Quest, CKD, New York CKD Champions Resources page, Captain Kidney. That's how you can help. We need to make this global. Again, you may ask or you have people to say, get loud for kidneys. Well, I challenge you, get loud for kidneys. Don't just like the post. Do something about it. Make your voices be heard. Whether you got kidney disease or not, we talking about the ninth leading cause of death and you're talking about dealing with Fortune 500 companies that are popping up, that are popping up like 7-Elevens. They the new 7-Eleven. You're the customer. They had the service. You, we go back. And it's a continuous cycle. Let's let our voices be heard. Let them be heard. The time is now. Urban Kidney Alliance stands united. We stand united. And, and who do we stand united with? The kidney warriors that are dealing with this disease. And we're working. We're working in conjunction with partners that care and want to see quality of life in warriors. Partners like Kibo, the makers of Renadale, the AAKP with their new initiative, Zero K. Are you okay? Zero K. 5.1. Initiatives like that. Michael Scott, Dallas's Warrior Gear, LLC, makers of the mask. Yes, we are here for you. All we need is for you to participate. That's all. Participate. Uh, I wouldn't let that new training stick that needle to me yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely we got somebody from the group that said i wouldn't hit that new train and stick that needle and you know what uh, this happens to a lot of warriors that people don't know about and when people catch on what happens they assign this to maybe an elderly person someone's mom or someone's dad 
that don't know any better. How many people took their dad, their mom to treatment and they came back with uh, uh, infiltration or blood on their clothes? How many warriors experienced that with their family member or even their self? They give me EPO to treat anemia. It is related to kidney disease. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for chiming in, Facebook user. Uh, thank you for both Facebook users for chiming in. But again, you got to be an advocate for yourself. It, 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 again, like when you go to dialysis and you see your blood leave your body, right? Or you come into treatment and you see the blood going through the filters. This is what they're going through. That's the material right there. Now, again, I um, I challenge you. How many units, right? Good afternoon, Facebook user. How many uh, people watching this, their dialysis unit came to you and showed you something like this and explain to you that your blood goes through this and how the process works. Has the National Kidney Foundation done that? Has the National Kidney Foundation done any type of training like this to show you about your machine, to uh, go over and do this and step by step to show you what to look for have any other organization out there done this? And this is my point. This is my point. A lot of people, and it's okay, because I know the Kidney Foundation been around. A lot of people are familiar with them and and used to them. But, like, when you... <laughs> You do the birthday thing and you advocate to raise money for a company that already has millions of dollars. I mean, they want for nothing. And the only thing they do, I mean, and I'm not hopping on them. They do good work. Yes, they got the information. Uh, donate a car, yada, yada, yada. The kidney walk. But. Are they on the boot? Are they boots on the ground? Like I'm here right now at 4:30 Eastern Standard Time PM, showing you this, what your blood goes through, so you can have an understanding, right, of what your blood goes through and not be fearful or unknowingly like what's going on or with the needle. That's what I'm saying. How else you can help? If you got a birthday coming up, you can even start a fundraiser for us. We're 501c3 Urban Kidney Alliance right off. We're 501c3 from the IRS. We are grassroots. We don't make millions of dollars. I'm in my basement right now. That's a green screen just to add some legitimacy some le some uh, legitimacy and professionalism. But I could pull the screen down and you can see my basement wall. The point is, we don't come in here asking all the time. All we ask is just the support so we can help how, how Christine Flowers said, Help us help you help us, right? And what I mean by that, you help us with the donations. The donations help us continue this broadcast in the five shows a week in the multiple streaming of education for kidney disease to help you. You see how it works? Help us help you 
help us. Wait a minute. Help us help you. Help us to help you. <laughs> but anyway, I've said enough. I've been on here 45 minutes. I thank the people who were on here. I hope I made my point clear on we just want to educate and we need the people to show up and participate. That's all. That's all. God bless you guys. Miss Felicia, Miss Kathy, Miss Susan, Larry, Rolanda, Aaron, Joe, Lewis. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, to our YouTube people uh, watching, thank you. God bless you. Oh, tonight. Let me tell you about tonight on Urban uh, Reno Talk with Tamika and Steve. We're going to have Dad TV. I'm sorry. We're going to have James Fabian, Fabian, a.k.a. Dad Vice TV Kidney Coach, right? This guy has something like 58,000 YouTube subscribers. He's a kidney warrior himself. He went from GFR of 8 to 33, right? He takes this product as well. And this guy had one video he did that had over a million views. He's going to be on here tonight, and he's going to tell you what he did to go from a GFR of 8 to 33, bypassing dialysis. We're going to have him tonight at 9 p.m. You better be here to watch it. You better because this guy, the only other way you're going to see him in the raw form is on his YouTube channel. That's right. Tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, James Fabian, a.k.a. Dad Vice TV, on Urban Reno Talk with Tamika and Steve, right here on Urban Health Outreach Media. See you guys later tonight, and you can also watch that show on YouTube as well. God bless you. Stay safe. Peace and blessings. Y'all, it's about to go down. I said y'all, it's about to go down.